I've made three trips home to Samar in the past year, but I have a little advantage. I only live three and a half hours from Manila. The trip getting to Samar is so easy these days, but the return trip to Guam isn't quite as convenient. That's all I got. One small suitcase. Terry's is twice as big as mine. The Guam to Manila leg starts early in the morning with a, with a 0555 departure time. I'm not sure what happened to the in-flight entertainment on this flight, but I'm sure glad my seat came with at least one bonus, a toothpick holder. great thing about this flight is that we not only arrive in Manila early, but we have just enough time to head over to Terminal 2 to catch our Philippine Airline Express flight to Calbayag City. As I have mentioned several times in previous travel videos, the only requirement for travel into the Philippines remains the e-travel registration. You can do it online up to three days before traveling, or you can do it at the airport, which is much more of a hassle. You will need to complete the e-travel registration or face the consequences like somebody else found out recently. Our layover in Manila is right around two hours and once we clear immigration we do need to reclaim our baggage and drop it off at the transfer desk for the customs check and the rerouting to Calbayag City. From what I've been told the bags are only subjected to x-ray inspection at this point before they're released for the domestic leg. We have never had a problem and the process has become so routine to us it actually feels convenient. Once the baggage is dropped off at the transfer desk, we catch the shuttle to Terminal 2 and arrive with almost an hour to spare before boarding our next flight. Because we usually book through from Guam to Calbayag City, we are allowed a full luggage allowance on the domestic leg of the flight. Once boarded, it's just under an hour until we touch down in Calbayag City. It's only a two hour time difference between Guam and the Philippines, and because we just live minutes from the airport, we are home in plenty of time for lunch. Aren't you happy you don't have to fly all the way from the mainland? Yeah, yeah. So three and a half hours from Guam. Connecting flight, and another hour to come by it. Breakfast to Guam, lunch to the Mayan City. Because the new Calbayag City Airport is less than 10 minutes from our house, we get picked up in our home in time for lunch and a nap. There are no naps skipped during this entire travel event. When it's time to leave Samar and head back to Guam, it's like a carabao of a different color. 
For whatever reason, I can't seem to pack my suitcase as fast for the return trip as I did coming. Maybe I'm just a little hesitant because I really don't like saying goodbye to the apple dog and the cats. The flight from Calbayag to Manila doesn't leave until noon, and it's never on time. It, it seems that way anyway. But it's okay because it's about a nine and a half hour layover in Manila, or before the final leg to Guam. This was quite an unusual flight as every expat on this plane well, I was acquainted with. Because of the length of the layover, sometimes we find ourselves visiting someplace like the Mall of Asia or the Venice Grand Mall. We made it. Look who I ran into. I ran into some people from Beery Island. Yeah. Beery Island. Yeah, some are. We're all in this together. We are at that point where we really don't want to deal with regular taxis, so we usually opt to take a coupon taxi. The coupon taxi uh, is just outside, uh, right there at the airport. It's a fixed price ride, always in a comfortable air-conditioned SUV or a van. It costs a few pesos more, but it's worth the peace of mind in, of traveling in comfort. This trip we decided just to head over to the Salem complex in Pasay City and the good folks at the coupon taxi stand called in the free shuttle service offered by the airport hotel where we got a room for about, I think it was twenty six fifty. They got us a shuttle. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for the shuttle. The Salem complex is an all-inclusive gated community located across the street from Terminal 4. And it offers all the amenities that a weary traveler would expect, like food choices, and a couple of night spots with refreshments. You can play a few games of pool or get a massage. There's also a sushi joint, Jollibee's, Shakey's, a big local candelaria, hair and nail salon, Metro Bank and BDO branches, ATMs, a convenience store, and there's more. I did a video on the Salem Complex back in 2017, and you can watch that video to get a good tour. I found that the pandemic has rearranged a few businesses at the complex over the last few years, and even chased a few others away. But for the most part, businesses have since returned, and the complex again offers everything you could possibly need while waiting on a flight. This most recent trip I was traveling solo, and Terry stayed back in Guam, but usually our plan of action includes a salon visit, a haircut for me and uh, a manicure for her, then we might get a Thai massage either before or after dinner. Then it's back to our room to catch a couple hours of sleep before the red-eye flight back to Guam. The added benefit of having the free shuttle service back to the airport at any hour of the evening is worth half the price of the hotel in my opinion. Just don't trust them with the wake-up calls. This new Pod Hotel actually replaces the old Rogers Place Hotel that we have used many times before in our travels. Or Rogers Place was a bit more homey as we remembered it, and a complete makeover has taken place. I guess it will take some getting used to, but at least the hot water and aircon are working well. The old gift shop that was originally located downstairs with the currency exchange has been relocated to the second floor and is open 24 hours. It's real handy if you need some shampoo or a bottle of scotch. My room was around the corner on the other side, and if you stand taller than 5 foot 11, you better be careful. The new room was modern and very clean, and even came with extra pillows. The comfort room is still the older wet room design, but it was in excellent working order and very clean. A new addition to the channel lineup on the mostly Filipino limited cable system was more on TV. Seriously. More on 5.2. I'll be darned. So that's the channel I tuned into. Knowing that our flight was already delayed over two hours until midnight 30, my wake up call for 9.30 p.m. that I did not receive didn't matter, as I was already up and ready for the requested 10 p.m. shuttle to the airport. We're here at Terminal 1, and this place is empty. I've never seen it this empty. Last time we flew out of here, that place was packed. It's less than a 10 minute ride this time of the night from the Salem complex to Terminal 1, so there was no hurry. With the flight going to Guam, now there's nobody. But we've got our boarding passes. We've been processed through on the, from the domestic side. 
The total travel time on this return trip from Kelbayag to Guam is about 18 hours, give or take, and it can turn into a rather long day. But there's a bright side to all this. I still don't miss out on a nap in either direction. Thank you.